sooner or later, they were bound to come face to face. While the Neanderthal try to flush out their pig, into the same forest comes a new hunting party. Another human species. And they hear the same pig. At the time Neanderthals went to extinction, we know anatomically modern humans, people like us, had also moved into Europe and were competing with them, perhaps for those areas where it was slightly easier to catch the game. Modern humans that have larger group sizes, more efficient tools maybe, they might be just that better at hunting. The Neanderthal's plan to corner the pig seems to have failed. They've lost sight of it in the undergrowth. But then it seems to break cover further down the hill. In fact, the modern humans have got there first. The first encounter between two almost identical human species is a profound shock. And in this tough Ice Age world, there is only room for one of them. Why was it ultimately us, and not them, who prevailed? The first evidence for modern humans in Europe is dated at 40,000 years ago. But Neanderthal occupation stretches back 150,000 years. What they don't know is that they are related to each other. Five hundred thousand years ago, they shared a remote common ancestor. A descendant of Homo erectus. From their African homeland, their ancestors migrated across half the world. Spreading as far as Southeast Asia and into Northern Europe. Here, they would emerge as Neanderthal man. But the ones who stayed behind in Africa evolved too. And just under 200,000 years ago, a new species first appears. It is Homo sapiens, modern man. They too were hunters. But some scientists have suggested they supplemented their diet with fish, spurring their brain development. The evidence suggests their culture developed faster, that their social groups became bigger and more complex, and driven by population pressure and climate change, they too migrated. It took 150,000 years to spread from Africa to Europe, and as they moved further and further north, their appearance changed. And eventually, they caught up with their long-lost cousins, the Neanderthals. The European continent is losing one of its oldest, most successful species. Within a few dozen generations, the last Neanderthal will be gone. A world overrun by a species with better weapons, better organization, greater numbers. Modern man.
Now, for the first time in our evolutionary history, we are totally alone. The last surviving hominid species on Earth. Within 40,000 years, Homo sapiens would colonize the whole world, free of any competition. This is finally us. Physically, the result of three million years of change since Lucy. But we are also fully human in our mind. And it's that which has given us the critical edge. The one thing that Neanderthals didn't do that we know that early modern humans did was express themselves artistically. The social systems that humans have, the richness of, of communication between humans, uh, not just speaking but symbolically, must be part of the success of modern humans. And it, it may well have given us the edge over Neanderthals and the other species that were here 50,000 years ago. That same mind that gave us victory over our rivals will one day ask the obvious question, where did I come from? For over 150 years, we have been searching for the answer to that question. And each piece of evidence has brought us a clearer and clearer picture of our past. But the search hasn't stopped. Many people say the more you find, the more there is to find. But I've been in the field long enough to know that almost every year an important discovery is made. I keep telling my students I never give the same lectures twice. I mean, it's a hugely dynamic field. Uncovering our evolution has been a remarkable adventure. One that looks set to continue. It leads us to, to wonder, what else is out there? What else are we going to find? In the next 10, 20 years, as paleontologists explore parts of the world that we haven't gotten to yet, who knows what we're going to find?